Hello everyone, welcome to another Stata tutorial video. In this video, I'm going to go over how to use Stata to execute a hypothesis test. As you can see here, I've loaded up our Indiana 100 dataset into both Stata and Excel. First, let's think about a standard mean hypothesis test for our income variable called inktot for total personal income. First, let's look at how to manually conduct the hypothesis test. So first I'm going to use the summarize command or sum for short, sum inktote. When I use this command, I'm given the number of observations, the mean, the standard deviation, the min and the max for the income variable. I'll hop over to Excel and use these pieces of information to calculate our t-statistic. I'll go to sheet two and type in our number of observations, mean, standard deviation, and copy these in from Stata. Of course, I also need to know what our null hypothesis is. So let's say that my null is that the mean of income is 35,000. Now I'm ready to calculate the t statistic. For the numerator, I need the difference in the sample mean and the null value. And for the denominator, I need the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. And this gives us negative 1.45. Let's verify this by using the t-test command in Stata. So type in t-test and the variable that I'm interested in is total income. Now we need the null. We have a double equal sign for a logical equals, and then the null hypothesis value. Now that I've run this command, we have some results. First thing we'll look at is the T statistic. Here we can see that it is essentially the same as what I got uh, when I calculated manually, and that's just due to rounding error. At the bottom of the results, we have the p-values for three different alternative hypotheses. The one on the left and the one on the right are one-tailed tests, and we're not going to focus on those. We'll look at the middle, which is our two-tailed test. And here we get a p-value of about 0 0.15. We can get the p-value using Excel as well. And to do this, we use the t distribution, so t dot dist, and then for the two-tailed test, we want 2t. Now inside the parentheses, we put our t statistic and the degrees of freedom, which is n minus one, which of course is 99 as verified by Stata. Now notice that this threw an error. And the reason for that is that we need to have a positive number for the t, so we'll just use the absolute value. The actual sign of the t distribution does not matter for the two-tailed test. As you can see, we get the same answer. Now, if I want to do this directly in Excel, I can do that as well. So we'll need to calculate the same values, n, mean, standard deviation. So of course, n is 100. For the mean in Excel, we type equals average, and then select the cells we want. For standard deviation, equals STDEV, now, since we want a sample standard deviation, we need to select dot 
.s rather than .p. And inside, we select, again, the cells. We can compare these with the values that are shown in Stata, and we can see that we've done this correctly. We'll write down our null hypothesis again of 35,000. And now we're ready to construct the t-statistic. For the numerator, the difference in the sample mean and the null. The standard and deviation the divided by square root of n. And we get the same thing. Since our data set has over 30 observations, we can relatively safely use the central limit theorem to use normal distribution critical values to assess the null hypothesis. Recall that for a 90% degree of support, we would need a critical value of at least 1.65, and you can see that we don't have that. So we are unable to reject with 90% degree of support. We can look at the p-value to see what the highest degree of support we could possibly reject at, and that's about 85%, so one minus the p-value. That's all I have to say right now about hypothesis tests. In the next video, I'll go over how to do a hypothesis test for a two-sample means test. For right now, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.